Welcome everyone to the MGN channel. I'm your host Cornish and oh boy, we got a really cool game to talk about. And that game is In Sound Mind. In Sound Mind is one of the best rich storytelling of psychological I have truly played in a very long time. And that is coming from me. You know, it's up there, right? Right on the up there with my top five with Silent Hill and all that for storytelling for a psychological horror game like this. In Sound Mind is a psychological horror game with an incredible, awesome, rich storytelling. You play as Desmond Wales, a well accomplished therapist who wakes up in his apartment, realizing the world around him has flooded and noticing he is trapped in a weird world guided by his cat, who has advised him to find the tapes of his recent patients that has either disappeared or now deceased, whilst trying to hold on to your own insanity. Now, there is a lot to talk about with this damn game because. Wow, I, I, I played through it and it was one of the best rides I've had since I was young playing all the Silent Hill games or any other like storytelling type games. This one blew my mind. The fact this game is a unique horror. It has great puzzles, it has a good boss fights and not to mention the original music of the game is made by Living Tombstone. How insane is that? So let's get down to the first thing, the storytelling. Right out of the bat, the first patient tape you get really sucks you in, thinking this is just in your head or you're going crazy. Each patient has a monster inside them and you'll need to travel to different realms of their life. While the more you go deeper, the more interesting it gets with the connection for each patient and why you are here. But I really want to talk about how the feel of the story is. The storytelling is strong and fantastic. But what I really want to talk about is I was so blown away for each tape, aka Axe. And the dialogue is so powerful, strong, with a lot of emotions for each character layout. From Desmond to the story itself, with the music blending in with the dialogue, it worked really, really well. That feel of excitement but sorrow is just in there and it's incredible. It really, really is. It's okay. I see you. You can rest now. We did it, boys. I don't think Virginia would be capable of doing something like this without some sort of outside influence. I promise you, Miss Rule, I'll get to the bottom of this. Oh! Oh! Oh no! 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 Now the next segment is the gameplay. The gameplay feels wonderful and with a lot of places to explore, you end up going back to finding new things. There are weapons you can acquire hidden in the apartment building and the rest you go as you play along the main story. But be warned, I didn't realize half of the equipment which was in the building. So make sure you have a look around the building once you get a couple new upgrades like the, the blade, mirror or other, other, other useful tools. With the scares, there are no cheap in-your-face jump scares. And even though there's a bit of scares, it's perfectly timed. So compared to all these other games that do its original jump scares, this one kind of like has its own unique scares. It's hard to talk to say that because a lot of games, if you really want a good scare, it would either be in your face or uh, they'll do something like a, a moving mannequin head. But this game was completely different. But another cool thing which I have noticed, if you have stayed in the area quite long and you end up backtracking quite a few times like I have, the game can give you like a um, pick-me-up scare. So <laughs> they could put something behind something to make you freaked out, like the guy in the yellow coat. Um, <laughs> it's happened to me quite a few times, I'll be honest with you. 
Now, another thing is in the gameplay, you end up obtaining a mirror blade. If, if you're ever stuck and you need a hint, well, when you get the glass piece, you can find the clues in case you are lost or trying to find stuff. It helps you a lot. You can see stuff from behind you that is not in the world. There are also some puzzles where you need to use the mirror on like a red light thing to spawn in a key from either a clock or yeah, oh, later on in the game. There's just loads you can do with the mirror. And it is a quite a useful tool, not a more of offensive, but more of a in-game puzzle solving thing. Oh, oh it tells you what everything is here. So you look around and it, rev ah, it reveals like... Each area you venture in the game has an incredible feel, and most games nowadays, they don't have the same feel when you go to these places. With enemies, you can either stealth past them or just go completely crazy and offensive. If you have the firepower for each enemy, then you'll be alright. If you haven't got enough bullets, then I think stealth will be your approach. Each enemy and monsters are really cool looking, as with the monsters, it resembles the patient's aura. And with the other monsters around, for things trying to stop you, you'll get, it's, it's really good. Now for the next segment, the puzzles. The puzzles are very, very good on this. The puzzle solving is very fun and brings that classic horror back when you have a look for an item around the game. In order to get to areas, which I have missed this classic feel, you'll need to go and fetch the item and find the right place to put it in a, a slot in order to progress through a door or complete the final puzzles for stages. Because if, 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 if Silent Hill has taught me everything, every item counts and make sure you really think about um, puzzle solving on that game. And I like that and I like... Uh, like, say for instance, there's this mission with the, the... I had to find doll pieces for a doll house, and there's a door behind it. In order to open the door, I need to look at the poem, and it will give me some slight hints of where the doll figurine should be in the doll house. And that is cool. That's really cool. I miss those types of games that has that, where you have to really search around. There are some unique and creative puzzles in the game that made me really think in the game. There are times where I was stuck on a puzzle, and I was amazed how I managed to solve that. Uh, there, are, there are also some certain puzzles where I really thought about it and had to kind of think outside the box. There's another one where I actually had to write stuff down, which I've missed doing for puzzle solving. And there are also some really beautiful puzzles, like exciting puzzles as well. If you're those, if you're those fans of the veteran horror puzzle game type things, then this game is definitely for you. What? What am I doing? Oh, dude, come on! <laughs> Just shine it to be so beautiful. Look at it. Oh. They really know how to do their stuff, you know? So now on the next subject, the visuals. Well, what can I say about it? When every location you go shows a special color to resemble the patient's aura, from purple field to green, blue, red, aka rage, in these areas you explore, even in the entire, I guess, map layout, you can have that sense of per like aura around it. Uh, like the woman, um, she has this purple kind of aura, which is almost like sorrow and sadness. And then you've got uh, the bull one um, has this red aura, which is resembles anger. And that there shows how much they put into detail with each character and each emotion. Because there are some bits in the cutscenes that really push those emotions. But the thing is with the visuals of each location you go to, they're always different. And every place you go is very exciting. Now, also, we come to another important thing, which is the audio. Now, a lot of games tend to have cool audio. Doom, for instance, has a pretty crazy um, audio. In Sound Mind, man, now that, that was just, it's, that was so good. Um, 
what makes this game so perfect is the music, the sound, and the dialogue. The Living Tombstone did an incredible job at this music for the game. It was strong, emotional, and perfect. Another important thing with the audio in Sound Mind, there are some bits in the cutscene that really pushes the emotion with the audio and the dialogue. The voice acting is amazing, and the sound is great. To the point, it can put you in a sense of unease sometimes. When it comes to each patient you face in the game, they have their unique theme. Again, just like the aura, but with the sense of music sounds. No, honestly, right, I am... Um, I am a... I do like a fair bit of music in games, but this was one of my favorite soundtracks games for a very, very long time since Silent Hill, as I said. Like, here's an example. You know what I mean? And here is something that, I, as I said, uh, when an aura which resembles anger, this music comes in. You know? And uh, each act you do, where you're relieved after discovering the patient and the information, which I won't spoil, um, when you go back to your office, you get a nice sound that makes you feel relieved and, oh, wow, you know. You know what I mean? I would honestly check out the Living Tombstone soundtrack and just check out the In Sound Mind soundtrack. It's even great when you're even not in game. It's wonderful. Um, that's one of my favorite things with In Sound Mind. It, they knew how to push the music, audio, and dialogue into their game. But I gotta say, in overall, it really has been a long time since I've come across an amazing psychological horror, which has a pretty much everything with the scares and the perfect timing. The story is amazing and the gameplay is great, not to mention the creative puzzles in the game. Dialogue is spot on and every character is very interesting. And the price itself for the game is surprisingly cheap. I thought this was gonna be a AAA tile, so it was gonna be quite expensive considering they advertised their game on PlayStation 5 mainly, but it also came out on PC, which I'm very thankful for. If there's any fault in the game, there is one or two lag spikes, and that's with the Quicksilver, but either way, it's not too distracting and it will ruin your complete gameplay. I've not seen any fault or any glitches in the game, so that's a big plus. At least they spent time working on this game and actually went through it and found no bugs in the game, which I'm happy about. But the most important thing is to anyone who is a horror fan or a psychological horror fan, this game needs to be on your list. You need you need to download this now and check it out if you're interested. If you got this far, thank you so much. Like, I, this is saying a lot for me. This is really saying a lot for me. I, again, uh, ages ago, I am a connoisseur in horror games. I love my horror games. But this one tops it up on my top five since I ever started horror games. And I'll tell you what, I'll take this whole entire review of what I said to the grave with me because, again, this is one of the coolest games I've played in a very, very long time. Alright, we're gonna have to finish up here because that is my review on In Sound Mind. I do hope you enjoyed the and took the time to watch this video. I really appreciate everyone who has been supporting the MGN. I can't wait to make some more videos soon because we've got another review coming up in a few days, so make sure we're on that. And also, I'm on my quest for my horror marathon on my twitch.tv. See me play any of these games or see me play these games before I review them. I'm on my twitch.tv forward slash Cornish Games Nights. Link is down in the description. Don't forget to follow. And that is Cornish Signing Out. You take care and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yes, mate. <laughs>
What the fuck? Ready.